Hello friends, this is Ganesh. Hope you're doing good. In this video, we are going to see an option. Um, it's like in an uh, object oriented ALV. So how to trigger or refresh a data once the user press the tab option instead of uh, enter or a button click. So we have a dedicated method or a process for a button uh, click event or an enter uh, using an enter button. But we don't have any dedicated uh, method or a process for a tab. So we are trying to achieve this process with the help of a data changed event. So whenever there is a data change happen in any of the field or a particular field, then we are going to refresh the relevant uh, columns values as well. So this might be required with a limited source of the data because uh, if you're going to write like 100 lines of uh, records, the user may change every record or frequently mass values, then this is not the uh, um, good one as, the, as per the performance because they may have an option, okay, I, I want to just uh, change like 10 to 20 lines, then I press enter, then only the relevant information gets changed. That is one option. Another one is very rare. We have only five lines. The changes are very limited, but if I change uh, without pressing enter and press a tab, automatically the relevant information change. That, that would be why looking also, it's, it's looking good. So if that is a scenario, you may prefer this. Just, just check out your data volume uh, before applying these options, okay? So uh, as an example, I can show you here as if I change this to um, EWM S4, oh sorry, S4 iPhone 01. It's another material, okay? And I'm going to press tab, not enter. I'm going to press tab. So then what happens? It's going to change. Sorry, it's a little slow. Sorry for that. It's remote system. So I'll, I'll do it here. So EWM S4 iPhone 02 tab. So then it automatically changes the uh, one field and depends on your requirement if you want to modify multiple you can do what so this way also it gets changed and uh, without enter <coughs> you're able to just make this change as well okay so and one more thing and copy paste if the same uh, um, process if you copy paste then automatically it's changed the value of the relevant uh, field as well so either tab or copy paste also it works over here okay so this is the one which we are going to see on this video so let's get into the slide and just go through the steps very very easy steps because we're not going to have any new things here everything we have used already with object oriented alb concept we are going to make use of that to achieve this process okay let's get into the slide so this is a slide and uh, we have only just two slides so the first one, how to display um, object-oriented ALV. So it's very simple. You need a local class definition and implementation. And uh, you need a screen and it has a container on it. Then you have to initialize the container with relevant object as well as the method. And then you consider that as a parent, then you need a child on it. And uh, based on that reference, you have to uh, do it with a different method as well. And finally, um, keep uh, two different internal tables ready. One contains all the field catalog information, which is your row one, what is the field element and what's the text and everything. And another internal table holds that data, <coughs> excuse me. So once that, that two internal tables are ready, then you can make use of a set table for first display method to uh, just enable or just show your ALV in your output or in your screen format. Okay, so this is basic. And uh, to implement the process of the tab, we are going to use one event triggered method. So if there is an interactive ALV, always we use the event triggered method for enter, for user, for F4. So everything we need one method. So technically we call it as event triggered method. So here also we need one method that for that event called date changed event. So that we need one method on it and then data change event to be registered. So every event to be registered to trigger that one as well as the set handler to be set for for which object if this is happening through which object if this is happening then even trigger to be uh, method to be executed so those things ought to be uh, in place to make this process happen so that's what I'm saying 
uh, already I mentioned, uh, we are not going to learn any new things. The, the browser already we have uh, uh, learned. So now we are going to just make use of it to achieve this small process. Okay. So now let's go back to the system again. So um, this is the program. Uh, here I just added few lines uh, because it's very simple to understand. So I have a local class with the public section and I have one event trigger method, the event data changed of the class GUIL regret. Um, sorry, I got a call. Um, okay, uh, for this class and I need um, importing parameters for the data changed. Whatever the data change that needs to be captured, right? Out of 100 records, it just only two change. I want that two to be added in the internal table. So I need the parameter as well over here. And then uh, a few data mediums like data variables, uh, internal table, work area, um, structure, those are I just created it. As I showed, uh, we are going to use only the material and material description. And the below ones are uh, object uh, reference for a class. So first one is for the ALV grid and next one is for custom container and the other one is for the class which we define here. Okay. And then internal table, this is going to hold all the um, uh, field catalog, how the field should like, what are the description of the field and so long which is editable, not editable. So those things comes to this internal table and this is going to hold the data from MAKT table. And this is the relevant work area for it. I already call the screen 100, but it's not a created. So let me create it as we just go to layout. And here you have the custom container, or sorry, a custom control, Let me just call a container object. So I have it here. Just a name, any name you can give. Just go to flow logic. I want PBO, not PAI. So add to audit and go back. I'm not going to have the basic uh, exit option, exit button, and everything. I'm not going to enable it. So this is just to learn how the tab we are able to make it possible. Okay. So let me double click this. Yes, I want to create in my same program. Continue. Okay, that is also ready. So screen is ready. <clears throat> and uh, the first we are going to make a few things. Um, just initialize the custom container and then um, then pass the uh, reference where whatever initialized with the container, custom container and pass the reference to the ob object called OBJ ALV. So to just make use of that for the further process. So, give me a minute, let me just copy it. I just copy from that program. So this is the, this is the code, right? So um, I, once it is done, I'll just upload the code as well in the drive, so you can just make use of it. So here the first one is the object, especially uh, just exporting as a customer container name. And then after getting the reference, I'm going to just pass it to the object ALB as well. While creating, I'm going to pass this reference as well. And the below code it shows how the ALB is getting um, the ALB is getting designed. The first position, table name, and field name, and everything. So ID Mara, it's not a created. I'll create it. Um, then field value, column text, output length, and editors. Yes, editable. Okay. So maybe a description field, if you see, if you don't want to editable, so I can see not editable. Will that work? Okay, let's see that one. Okay. So now uh, this is for material description. Save it. Okay, so now I need to create IT Mara, right? So here I can just make use of that. Select MATNR, MAKTX from MAKT into table. with little lesser values and use okay and then the final uh, or the next one is the set table for first display to be added here so go to pattern object patterns 
obj alv okay i will copy that just a minute yeah we correct set table i'm sorry set table for first display I usually use this by passing buffer, but it is not relevant for this process. So if you want, you can just make use of it. I don't want any of this. So then output is in my IT Mara and the field catalog is in ALB internal table. Just so for the uh, easy visual, I just deleted the exceptions, but always keep an exception in the real time check it okay so implementation is missing let me have it at the end of means after the end module because it is also a processing block so after the end implementation end class then if you are if you want to have any executable statement then you have to use startup selection event so that could be the reason i'm going to have it at the end of the program and this method to be implemented here so to just um, avoid that error I am trying to have an empty implementation now check sorry check it So we are good now. So if you execute expecting um, that to be displayed some values, let's see. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Uh, I didn't have uh, any code on this, so nothing going to work. I'm going to use 38. So now we have to add a we already added it right we already added it we already implemented it but it's an empty implementation so we need to register this event uh, probably after set table display i'm going to do that so register and do the set handler and mostly we are good and we need to write a small piece of code over here so which record is getting modified that record to be uh, get the description from the database table or an internal table so that is what we're going to do it now so let's do the registrations here so here this is the code uh, which we are going to write like object oil we register edit event so that is a method so which needs to just pass the data change event so that's why you got to use an event called mc evet modified so whenever there is a change happens in the particular uh, internal table that actually a display using this reference variable then automatically that even this is actually going to trigger so once it's triggered and whatever the relevant triggering method that is that particular code is getting executed and uh, uh, we need to have a set handler as well for the same uh, event let me have that code also so here i have a statement just to create the reference of the object for the local class and using a set handler and i'm going to uh, triggering this method whenever uh, it's, it's getting triggered using this object reference okay so that is a set handler one we have to use it these are we have seen already so uh, we are almost done so let's do one thing have a breakpoint here and let's see whether it is getting triggered whenever i'm just um copy paste the value or i press tab so execute and just change some value oh sorry change some value 
and press tab. So now it's getting triggered. So now we got the point where we need to start write the code as well. So, so this is a, a simple piece of code. Uh, like after the user enter the value press tab, obviously it triggers the data change the event trigger method. So the first two data mediums are used to capture, especially this internal table is going to capture whatever the values are getting changed in the uh, input ALV input screen. And then uh, this is a standard uh, structure because it's going to capture what is the field name, what's the field value and the relevant information to be captured. And uh, using one of the uh, parameter of this method, like after tab, that is one of, one of the parameter called ER data change. So with the help of that reference, I'm going to get whatever values are getting changed in the input screen. As per this process, is, is going to have only one record all the times because whenever there is a change in press tab, then it captures only, it automatically comes inside the method. So it has only one method at a time or, or, or always. So that's what I use, just one. So uh, depends on the business scenario, you take a call, whether you go with this process or sometimes user wants, uh, I, let me enter all the values and press enter. Once I enter, then you just change all the relevant informations, all the uh, change relevant information to the uh, further uh, consecutive columns. So it depends on the need, you can take a call, whether go with the tab or go with the enter option, okay? So then these are very simple. After receiving the changed value, I'm going to get the description of the material from the relevant table. And uh, I'm going to pass it to uh, the relevant work area and I modified it based on the index value because this has the row ID also. I, I believe we have seen this in the interactive ALU report. So otherwise just keep, keep a breakpoint, you can able to see that one. So it will capture the row ID also, which row is getting changed. So based on that, you can just um, modify back to the original internal table as well. And uh, you need this um, method called a refresh table display, but this is not required. I mean, it's optional, I can say. Um, for this process, I don't want to use any stable column or row. So just this method is enough to refresh your ALV, then only it reflects, otherwise it won't, okay? So always use a refresh whenever you want to showcase your updated um, internal table content, then you have to ref use this refresh table display uh, method on class. So act toward it and execute it. So now let me change here EWM S404. If it is not there, it is not overwriting it. it. You can you can keep it empty or you can give an error message, whatever you want to relevant for the business needs, then you can add it. So here I'm just uh, adding only, only the values which is available over there. I'm not having any validation. So E W M. okay, there is no S4, no, there is no 0, 04. Okay, I have 10, 11 and all. Okay, let's. Go with 10, 10 tab, yes, so I have it. So EWM S4-03 tab, it worked, okay. So it depends, uh, even disable also it's worked because uh, I, the edit option I had disabled it for material description. So it depends on that, you can have a number of fields and you can update whenever you want. So this might be useful whenever you have an ALV as an input screen and user might enter some values and few fields are auto populated based on the entered value and this might be useful. Okay. So just play around in this and if you have any questions on it, please let me know. I'm trying to help on it. Thank you so much for your time and uh, see you in the next video. Bye.